Hey guys, how's it going? Companion here. Today I want to talk about the cards that I feel are really just a bit underrated, a bit underplayed in Arena. And uh, I, I mostly want to give you guys this list. It's going to be like a top three. Because, you know, when you're playing Arena, it, you just you just should be seeing more, more of these cards, and you're not. So it's kind of like a bit of a PSA where... Uh, these cards aren't really done justice in most people's minds. These cards aren't really rated quite as well as I think they should be or are just, you know, a bit unknown uh, when it comes to like arena websites. And also, um, a lot of players who are playing like free-to-play accounts who don't really have that many cards, they will look to uh, common cards in the sets and try to build just, you know, Zooey arena-like decks around them. And we saw a lot of this when it came to GVG because, well, the overpowered ones were obvious. They were the ones with the mech tag. So it, it, it's kind of like that. It's kind of building on that. And uh, well, let's get to the list. So the first is actually one that a lot of people kind of ridiculed as one of the worst cards out there, but it's really not. It is the Flame Lance. Um, Flame Lance actually has a pretty good score on some marine websites. It's, it's rated almost as well as cards like Polymorph because, well, it is Polymorph. Um, when it comes to Arena, uh, Polymorph will often do exactly the same thing as Flame Lance will do, and that one mana worth of tempo is actually, you know, worth something. As a mage, tempo is a really important thing, especially when you are removing a threat off the board. That's kind of, that's kind of how you tempo your opponent. They play something that has a lot of health, and for a lot of mana, and then you flame lance it for less mana, get it off the board, and then play a card. And this just makes it so the uh, the creature removal uh, can stay within the polymorph and the flame lance, and you can use your fireballs more dynamically. Or if you just don't get fireballs, well, it just does just as good. Um, so the idea is that these cards, even though they're not as good as some other cards, like obviously flame lance is nowhere near as good as fireball, but you know, if you're running these kinds of decks, or if you're running against decks that are going to have these big threats constantly, which in Arena you are, most Arena decks are going to have like three or four cards, they're just going to be, you know, within that range, you're going to require something, and often Fireball won't even do the trick. Uh, these days a lot of cards have more than seven health, which is basically the reach of Fireball plus a ping, and uh, you're going to have to sacrifice a creature, use a Fireball, or you're going to be required to have the Polymorph, but um, now you can just have you know, in a more appropriate answer. With more people playing cards that can't be fireballed down, as a mage, you have more tools to deal with those cards. So it's important not to miss them. And when it comes to constructed, um, yeah, Polymorph is probably a lot better than Flame Lance because people mostly play big cards that um, require to be silenced and then killed. But even still, it's not really that horrible. So you can give it a try if you're at that level, if you're in the free-to-play zone and you are playing against a lot of big things. Now, the next two are a bit more practical for Constructed, and uh, we'll kick it off with the Buccaneer. Uh, this is the new Rogue Pirate introduced in TGT, and uh, this little guy is actually really good. Um, he is rated pretty well by Arena websites, but I feel like people just don't pick him. They just don't have faith in it. Uh, even though he receives pretty good ratings, people, I think, are very, very dismissive about one health uh, minions, especially ones that don't have an immediate effect, but it just doesn't matter. Um, the reason the Buccaneer is so good is, one, he's just like a threat. It's, it's a threatening one-drop. It is a one-drop. So if you're, if you're playing against a class that doesn't have a ping, you play this on turn one, you basically get a 2-2 two -two weapon on turn two, and often the 2-2 two -two weapon will be enough to deal with their two drop. You still have the 2-1, you still have the weapon, you play it. The game's over in that case, right? Uh, in other cases where you are playing against the ping classes, you can play a uh, Buccaneer, and then you can follow it up with an actual weapon, you can follow it up with an actual combo, uh, you can play him in a situation where you just get the weapon effect, where you're going to play a weapon anyway. It's only one more mana. You have to think about it that way. Like, you know, if you think Deadly Poison is good, he's, yeah, it's pretty good. Deadly Poison for, for one mana, you get two extra attack on your weapon. Uh, but Buccaneer for one mana, you get one extra attack on your weapon. If you time it kind of in the same way as you would, it's a little bit more tricky, but still you can do that. And you get the 2-1 body. So it's, it's really, um, 
it's really like a more dynamic, more flexible, more interesting, and in my opinion, more powerful than Deadly Poison. Um, people really haven't experimented much with this card in Constructed because Rogue really has failed to hit any kind of like uh, point in the meta whatsoever. But if you are willing to try Rogue, if you are willing to experiment a little bit because you don't have quite all those fancy cards, um, maybe try Buccaneer. It doesn't seem too bad. A lot of minions in the game right now have exactly two health. In fact, most of the powerful ones do. So it does actually hit a pretty nice spot. It's just, yeah, if you are a free-to-play player, maybe just play Rogue for your dailies. And then, of course, this is my favorite. This is the Calder Raider. Um, originally, people thought, you know, there's Floating Watcher. There's this card. Floating Watcher is pretty good. It's, like, almost playable and constructed. It's quite good in Arena. Uh, but it seems like this is a little bit worse because it's not a demon. You can't Void Caller it out. You don't really get some of the super combos, which is usually how Floating Watcher ends up winning the game. But uh, it's not really so. Um, floating Watcher is a really good card. It's just that often at that stage in the game, um, using like the inspire mechanic basically to trigger Floating Watcher's effect as a warlock uh, isn't really all that good. Uh, sometimes you just don't have the life to spare, and even when you do, you're not generating tempo, you're just generating card advantage. So um, the fact that the two mana that you spend to draw a card is keeping you up on the board with Floating Watcher is, is really good. It makes it so your hero power no longer causes you to lose tempo, but it doesn't actually allow you to gain tempo. And that's really the main difference with Kvalder Raider. Um, now, there are some classes where Kvalder Raider is just uh, absolutely terrible, like Warrior, um, because your hero power still does nothing. You're basically on the same level as a Warlock. But there are hero, hero powers that actually do a lot, especially in the late game, when it comes to just, uh, you know, micromanaging the board and getting a little bit extra juice out of it. Um, so, like, if you're playing Mage, for instance, um, if you're doing, like, Floating, floating Watcher Tap, uh, yeah, you gain that card, but it's it's still, you know, you still didn't affect the board. But if you're a Mage, you do Quell the Raider and you use your Hero Power, you might, you know, kill off a one health minion, um, and then you have that same body. So you gain, like, a little bit, little bit extra tempo, and that's, that's really important. And when you compare that level of tempo to other big cards, you actually notice that Quell the Raider is actually considerably better in a lot of cases. And actually, a lot of the arena websites don't reflect this. So if you compare uh, Kvalda Raider to like Boulder Fist Ogre, which is known as, you know, just like the, the solid standard for big dude in arena. Um, yeah, Kvalda Raider is going to be one extra mana over. Um, it's going to be one health less. But you're going to get that effect of the hero power when you pay seven mana for him. So sometimes that effect is actually going to equalize out. But the difference is that if you don't deal with the Boulder Fist for one turn, you know, that's a little bit of a problem. But if you don't deal with Kvalder Raider for one turn, it's like completely over. Uh, the Inspire mechanic just steamrolls out of control. So it's, it's about as big of a threat. It's about as good when it comes to the first turn that it's played. But because of the potential for the future for the card after it stays on the board, especially in these classes that have good hero powers, um, the threat of the card is just considerably higher than a lot of late drops, a lot of good late drops that seem comparable. So because of that, Quella Raider really is one of the best cards out there in Arena. And uh, in Constructed, it's not terrible. Uh, I've actually faced against some Constructed decks, and Quella Raider has actually been a little bit of a problem. Uh, it's obviously not like a premium card or anything, but, you know, under the same guidelines that I mentioned, you know, a lot of people play like free-to-play stuff. If you're playing like free-to-play Mage, and um, <laughs> you're running Boulder Fists, which, I mean, I was a few months ago on one of my accounts. Uh, Call the Raider is just a better option, in my opinion. So check it out. Try it out. And I got some clips for you guys to show some of the strengths of some of these cards. So enjoy those. Have fun. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Okay. Mm, not bad. It's getting hot in here. Top deck flame juggler. Oh, he misses it. Right. Victory for 
That was almost complete bullshit. <laughs> Not seem like a good play right now. Here we go. Here we go. I have a lot of high attack minions, so he'll probably want to play a high health minion. And if he has too high health, it's going to have too low attack, which means Kodo is going to instantly close out the game. So that's the hope. He has like a turtle or some stupid card like that. I won. Hmm. Not quite. I made the trade because I wanted to Kodo what came out, but it wasn't Kodoable. Yeah. Your mother was a Here we go. Hey, give me that. Ah! Here we go. Dude, this Buccaneer is done like. 10 damage and given me like four weapons. This <laughs> is crazy. Uh oh. Oh, it's got freeze trap though. Mm -mm. So sorry, Broski. Here we go. Yo, ho, ho. I think the Savage Caban is a little slow. I like these two cards and I like the silence. Yeah, uh, yeah. Drop the cleric. I like the Not cleric. I'll be a real knight. That looks like a demon to me. I mean, I guess I get countered by Mortal Coil, but not really. It's all about a tempo game. So if he wants to kill my guy with Mortal Coil here, then he's absolutely welcome to. Now that I think about it, it was a higher tempo play to drop the Cobra. It's a riskier play. But it's a higher tempo play. Maybe I should have done that. Wow, that card sucks. Um, I could play Fairy Dragon Lance Carrier. I could also just Lance Carrier next turn. I don't really like Senja Shieldmaster. What if I just do Fairy Dragon Lance Carrier? He gets punished by Chargers and it gets punished by uh, Stormpike Commando. There's very low chance he has Stormpike Commando because he's 7 and 1, or something close. So I think we're gonna do that. What you want? Hellfire? Hellfire's totally fine. Demon Wrath. Ooh. 
That one's a little trickier. Argent Horseman. Hmm. That's true as well. Yeah, maybe I didn't uh, think that through as much as I should have. Because you guys are naming off a lot of cards that really aren't that uncommon. So many possibilities. Maybe I should have thought about that a little bit more. I just, I just still don't like this engine there. Oh, no dragon. Okay. Give me a quest. Yeah, this is like go badly. Okay. Oh, dragon. How many dragons do we have? I really, really needed to draw one there. Or the Savage Combatant would have been good too. So I had the Savage Combatant, I had two Volcanic Drakes, I had two Hungry Dragons, I had the Dragon Sorcerer. That's six, six outs. That's it's really not all that unlikely. Okay. Sucks. High tide. The dingo. All the while. Why are there so many spammers? Because we're streaming on Twitch. That's why. Um, Savage Combatant is plus two, Abusive is plus two, North Sea is plus one. I believe if we get two damage, we win the game. For Blackwing! <laughs> well, we didn't. We must cleanse the sun. You will regret this. Oh, that looks fun. For the Lich King! I have to see what I've never done this. I want to see what the animation's like. Yes. Push forward. There we go. That BM made up for the last one. 